Have you got that man here tonight, Lieutenant? Uh, you'll have to tell us, Mrs. Seagar. If he's here, I'll tell you all right. Uh-huh. Well, we can sit right here. There ought to be laws against a man like that. Marrying woman after woman, stealing their money. There are, Mrs. Cedar. He must be found and punished, Lieutenant. You understand? Well, we'll do our best, Mrs. Cedar. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Keep it moving, boys, over here at the end of the stage. That's right, right over here. Step it up. Turn all of you and face the screen. That's right, stand still, keep your hands at your sides. When you answer my question, sing out. The people on the other side of the screen want to hear you. All right, number one, James Franklin, assault with a deadly weapon. Step right up there, Jim. That's it. Where do you live, Jim? Uh, Bremerton. Talk up, Jim. Where do you live? Uh, I, I said uh, Bremerton. Where'd you sleep last? Uh, Somewhere on a road. Uh, I don't know where. Keep your head up, Jim. Look at the screen. How long you been in town? I just got in. Didn't waste any time getting picked up? So I was picked up. Have any weapons? Yeah. What kind? Gun. Knife. What kind of gun? Pistol. 32 Colt. Blue steel or nickel plate? Steel. Where'd you get it? Around. Where? Somewhere around. Uh... Did you use it? Well, the guy's in a hospital, ain't he? On the critical list. So I used it. Why? He shouldn't have held out on me. You got all the money he had. One lousy buck. That's all he had. I thought he was holding out on me. One lousy buck. Not even enough for a good hotel room. Don't worry, we'll give you a place to stay. All right, slide down. Number two, Charles the Professor Grompton, drunk and disorderly. Step right up, Charlie. I, I'd be delighted, Sergeant. Uh, you sound happy tonight, Charlie. Well, why not, sir? I'm back among friends again. This is the 39th That's time you've been up here, Charlie. You promised really? to stay out of trouble the last time. As indeed I am, sir. That's not what it says here. Both charges, sir, are the base canard. Professor Charles Grompton may have on occasion imbibed too freely of the great but disorderly. Never. They threw you out of Joe's bar last night, Charlie. The only gentleman's disagreement concerning the amount of the tap, sir. Joe says you tossed an empty beer bottle through his plate glass window. A grotesque accusation. I was merely the victim of superstition. How does that figure? Well, while endeavoring to enhance the flavor of the beer, I spilled some salt. Naturally, I tossed the pitch over my shoulder. I realized too late that the window was behind me. The salt smacked it to bits. <laughs> How could a pinch of salt break a big window like that, Charlie? Well, well obviously, sir, the glass was of inferior quality. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Charlie, move down. Number three, Harvey Davenport, Grand Theft Auto. Step right up there, Harvey. Face the screen. Where do you live, Harvey? I ain't talking, Harvey. Where do you live? I told you I ain't talking. You talk pretty fast at the car dealers. Yeah, what a sucker he was. He was the sucker? Sure. And how come you wound up here? I ain't talking, Papa. Oh, lousy night. Yeah. I wonder if it'll ever <laughs> stop snowing. <laughs> Flesh, ah, right. Better stop. Oh, you said. <sighs> What's your tie, bed? Uh, yeah. It's uh, the left, too. <sighs> Be glad when I get home. This late shift's killing me. 211 at Harrison and Main Sedor. Street. Uh huh. 211 at Harrison you, and Main Street. Hmm? Haven't said ten words. Nothing on your mind? Yeah. Charlotte Evans. What made you think of her? The weather, I guess. Same kind of night. Over a year ago, wasn't it? January 3rd, 1952. Oh, fill me in, will you? I wasn't working homicide then. Well, nothing much to it. He was a young kid. Stormy night like this. Deserted streets. She was coming home alone. I found her the next morning. Buried in a drift. Throat cut. You never got anywhere with it? No. No witnesses, no motives, nothing. 
just a young kid buried in a snowdrift of the throat cut. Period. Card 23A, like call your state. Now, that's what Dr. Gorson Part said. Three. Call your state. You can't station. get them all, Ben. Yeah, I know. But I'd sure like to. Call 32B, <sighs> investigate missing persons report. 67. Oh, thanks for the lift, Hartford. Ben. Right. Dorothy Shelton. Oh, uh, what time did you pick me up? Uh, Car 32B, investigate a, a missing persons report at 6720 Hartford. A Dorothy Shelton. Uh, this is 13K Guthrie. What's the dope on that missing persons assignment to 32B? Hold on, 13K. We'll check. It's got you all steamed, Ben. That address on Hartford. What about it? Well, it's just... Car 13K on that missing persons report. Clocked in at 2.17 a.m. this date. Name Dorothy Shelton. 21, single, Caucasian. Reported missing since 7.45 p.m. by Father Thomas. Want the description? Well, that'll hold me, thanks. Want to take a ride, Pete? 6720 Hartford? Yeah. Why? It's a block and a half from where Charlotte Evans was killed. There's 32B, Ben. Just pulled up. Yeah. Lieutenant Guthrie? That's right. Officer Randall, car 32B. We got an amended flash on that missing persons investigation. Said you'd take over. Yeah, uh, cruise the neighborhood, Randall. All night restaurants, drug stores. Find out if anyone's seen the Shelton girl. I'll check with you when we get through here. Right, Lieutenant. Come on, Pete. It was a lousy night. Yeah. Uh, yes? Uh, Mr. Shelton? Yes. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Carger. We're police officers. The police? You found her? Dorothy? And she's all right? Uh, no. Uh, we haven't found her yet, Mr. Shelton. Oh. Well, I thought perhaps you... We'd like to get some details from you, please. Oh, yes, of course. Come in. Thanks. Come in. Thanks. Uh, in here, please. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry I was so insistent about this, Lieutenant. I, I know you don't usually do anything for at least 24 hours, but well, I know that something's happened to Dorothy. Uh, what makes you think so, Mr. Shelton? Well, I know my daughter. She'd never do anything like this. Be so late and not call or anything. She knows how I worry about her. There's just the two of us here, you see. Uh -huh. And she's been missing since 7.45 last night? Uh, that's right. At least that's the time she left school. Now, what school is that, Mr. Shelton? The Gruyere Art School on Madison Avenue. She goes there on Tuesday and Friday nights. Anyone leave with her? Well, I asked the school that, and they said no. Uh -huh. Is that her picture over there on the desk? Yes. Yes, that's she. Beautiful girl. Oh, she is. She's a wonderful girl, too. If anything happened to her... Uh, I... Could we borrow that photograph, please? Well, of course. Oh, anything else is the only one I have like it. So you'll be careful. Oh, certainly. We'll return it tomorrow. This one have some copies run off. No. Oh, uh, Dorothy. Could she be... Uh, I, I'll be right back. Yes. What do you think, Ben? Uh, hard to tell. Could be routine. Yes. Love affair, running away from responsibility. Happens every day. Yeah. Only you don't think so, huh? Well. It's in Officer Randall. He, he wants to talk to you, Lieutenant. Oh, thanks, Mr. Sean. What's up, Randall? Thought I'd better tell you first, Lieutenant. We got a flash in Dorothy Sheldon. Dead? Yeah. Where? Two blocks over on Paulson Avenue. She was in a snowdrift. Throat cut. Come in, Pete. Anything new, Ben? Uh, it stopped snowing. That's all, huh? Just about. Dorothy Shelton left the Gruyere Art School around 7.45, all right. Got on a streetcar at Madison and Fulton at 8.03. Got off at Paulson and Hartford, two blocks from home, about 8.57. Those times exact? Motorman says they are. Snow plows had been through a couple of minutes before. Car was traveling on schedule. Mm -hmm. Did the motorman know her? They remembered her by that bright plaid scarf she was wearing. Uh -huh. She started up the street alone. And that's the last anyone saw of her until 2.43 a.m. Except the guy who killed her. Yeah. What about that woman who found her? There's nothing there. She's driving home with her husband and a couple of friends. Headlights picked up the body when they turned into the driveway. You want some coffee? No, no, no. Coffee. There's something to keep me awake. <sighs> Mind if I come in, gentlemen? Oh, make yourself at home, Doc. Mm -hmm. 
Looks like you're holding a wake. We are. Want some coffee? No, thanks. Dorothy Shelton? Mm, that's right. Mm-hmm. Then include Doc Gorson among the mourners. Who are you? I knew it was going to happen. Oh, that's an interesting statement. What do you mean, Doc? Remember Charlotte Evans? Yeah. Same man killed both girls. Well, how do you know? Look, it's a classic example of compulsive homicidal mania. It's all right here. Oh. This is practically a book, Doc. What a time for me. Okay. Two crimes virtually identical. The victim's a young, slight girl, cause of death, a slash throat. Circumstances, a snowstorm. Girl walking home alone at night from a streetcar. Same time, same neighborhood. Same lack of obvious motive. All adds up to one thing. You're after a repetitive psychopathic killer. Well, there have been a lot of snowstorms the past year. Plenty of young girls out on the streets alone. How come he hasn't hit again before this? Well, must have been something special about those two storms. I don't know what it is. Your job to find out. Mm. You'd better get that guy. Given the same conditions, a similar circumstance, he's going to kill again. Hi, Brad. Pete. Hi. Hi. How you doing, Coyne? Yeah, I got two squads busy making a house to house. Come up with anything? Yeah, frostbite. Man, that's cool. Nothing on Dorothy Shelton? Then if they hadn't found her in that drift, I'd swear she never got off that streetcar. Well, somebody must have seen her. Keep checking. Sure. Going inside those houses, I get a chance to get warm. I'll see you later, Coyne. Right, Brad. Well, that's a big help. Yeah. Think you'd come up with anything? Somebody had to see her. Her or the guy who killed her. Yeah, maybe not. Well, somebody had to. Oh, letting this thing ride you pretty hard, Ben. Remember what Doc Gorson said? Sure. Now, how much sleep you had the last four days? How much have you had? Mm, okay. Where to now? Uh, let's stop at this restaurant. Great, great. I could use some coffee. <coughs> oh. Sure got to get rid of this one. Oh, this will help. Feels yeah. good in here. Yeah. Ugh. Gives you a Hi, chill. Hi, fellas. Huh? What'll it be? Uh, let's see. Uh, what kind of pie you got? Better take the apple. Okay. Yeah, me too. Coffee all the way around? Yep. Guess I didn't have to ask, not in weather like this. We've sure been doing the land office business in coffee. <laughs> Making up for the storm? You ain't kidding. Here's a pie. Oh, thanks. This was the loneliest place this side of Siberia during that blizzard. I'll get the coffee. Nobody came in, huh? Brother, it wasn't for the snowplow men coming in, I could have froze to death in here and nobody'd found me for days. Yeah, like that Shelton girl. Hey, how about that? The poor kid. What kind of a louse had done a thing like that? Brother. Yeah. Too bad nobody saw him. Well, who could have seen him? Nobody was out in them streets. It didn't have to be. Well, you'd still think somebody would have seen him. Not a chance. I was talking to Joe Travers about it. He said there was nobody on them streets. Well, who's Joe Travers? Guy lives around here. He was driving one of the snow plows that night. They put him on as extra help, you know. Ah, uh, lives around here, does he? Yeah, over at the Claridge Hotel. He says he didn't see nobody out on them streets, and he ought to know. Yeah, I guess. Uh, through, Pete? Huh? You through? Oh, sure. Hey, you didn't finish your pie. Something wrong? No, just in a hurry. Hi there, Mr. Travers. Yeah, that's me. Uh, we're police officers. Could we talk to you for a minute, please? Sure, come on in. Thanks. <coughs> uh, I need a workout. I'll knock them sniffles. Yeah. Uh, have to excuse how the joint looks. I've been working out with the weights. Yeah, I can see. Keep in shape that way. Two hours a day really builds the guy up. Yeah, I'll bet. Say, I still got ten minutes to go. You mind if I work out while we're talking? No, no, go right ahead. Thanks. I do, officer. If I get to pay a parking ticket or something? Oh, nothing like that. We're investigating the murder of Dorothy Shelton. Yeah, I read about that. Real tough. Ah, pretty good, huh? Weighs 200 pounds. Takes muscle, boy. I'll bet. 
You were driving a snowplow the night she was killed, weren't you, Travers? Yeah, that's right. I don't do it regular. I'm on the... I'm on the extra list. Ah, you, uh... You covered this neighborhood? Yeah. Did you happen to see Dorothy Shelton? No. See anybody at all on the streets? A couple of people, not her, though. How do you know? All the men. Watch me. Get down on one knee now. Do you notice anything peculiar about anything? Uh, too busy driving. Do you notice anything peculiar about any of them? No. Now watch. I straighten up. Press over here. Sorry, I had to go back. Notice anything peculiar about any of them? No. Too busy driving. Anything else you can tell us about it? No. Now watch. I straighten up. Press overhead. <coughs> Down. Ah, that's really doing it, huh? We're trying to get some information, Travis. Ah, uh, sure. I told you everything I knew. A guy could have committed murder a foot away in that storm. You wouldn't know the difference. I don't think you guys got a chance. We're going to try. Huh? Stop around again sometime. Watch me work out. I'm entering the Mr. America contest next summer. How do you think I'd be as Mr. America, huh? Just great. Check over those number two flowers, boys. Give me a report by five. Got a big one coming up. Now forget the extra list. That'll hold for 24 hours. Uh, pardon me, uh, you Superintendent Saunders? Yeah, that's me. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. Oh, yeah. Glad to know you, Guthrie. Now, let's go in the office. Can't hear yourself think out here. Uh, sure. Uh, that's better. Thanks. Sit down. Thanks. <laughs> That's better. Sit down. Thanks. You said over the phone you wanted some dope on our street maintenance setup. Your snowplow operation's the one I'm interested in. A couple more hours, you can see it working. There's a dilly of a storm heading our way. Uh, what do you do about the side streets when it hits? Nothing. Well, you clear them, don't you? Not usually. You only have a limited amount of equipment and personnel. Main traffic arteries have to be cleared first. You don't clear the side streets at all? Oh, once in a while... Depends on how long the storm lasts, how quick we can clean up the main streets. Uh, what about the last one? Yeah, we had some details on side streets uh, toward the tail end. Uh, what about the neighborhood around Paulson and Hartford? It's hard to remember. I don't think so, but let's take a look. Okay. Well, let's see. Paulson and Hartford. Yeah, we did send one unit in there on the last night. Did you ever send any in there before? Yeah, January 3rd, last year. Medium rotary plow, same type we used this year. Well, tell me, uh, you any idea who drove it? Same man who was on it this year, an extra, name of Joe Travers. Communications all set, man? Yeah, Captain Walter's holding emergency... Communications all set, Ben? Yeah. Captain Waldo is holding frequency four open for us. There'll be a straight two-way radio between the cars. How many cars have we used? Two. Ours and Quine's. Three square blocks to cover? Two cars? Uh, can't be helped. Even two's pretty risky. Yeah, I guess. Quine. Yeah, Ben? That uh, police woman get here yet? Uh, Sergeant Barnes, yeah, she's here. Uh, send her in. And uh, see if you can get Superintendent Saunders at street maintenance. Right, Ben. wonder how she's been doing. Well, we'll find out. Think it's going to work? Doc Gorson does. Take his word for it. We have to. Hello, Lieutenant. Uh, come in, Sergeant. No Pete Carger? How are you, Sergeant? Fine, thanks. Well, sit down. Oh, thanks. Well, how's it been going? Well, pretty well, I think. You've met Travers? It wasn't too difficult. I've had the apartment next to his for four days now. Uh -huh. well, how's he been reacting? Pretty queer duck. Doesn't seem to have much interest in women. And at times I've seen a look in his eye that... Well, I know how Dorothy Shelton and Charlotte Evans must have felt. Uh, you've been taking the same streetcar home every night? Yeah, that's right. 
I get off at Paulson Street at exactly 8.57. Travers know? I've invited him to meet me there. Hasn't taken me up yet, but he knows the time. He's going to take you up, Sergeant. When? Tonight. Anything special you want me to do? Just get off the car at the regular time. Make sure the street's deserted. If anyone's around, fix a broken shoelace or something mm-hmm. till they're gone. Then start walking up Pawson toward the Claridge Hotel. We'll handle the rest. Okay. Anything else? That's it. All right. See you later tonight. Uh, she'll do. Yeah. Now, here's the diagram of the location. Quine's car will be here on Paulson. Halfway between the car line and the hotel. Stick out like a sore thumb, won't it? Oh, it's, it's uh, buried in a drift. It looks like a park job caught by the storm. What about mobility? We handle that. We park here. The alley on the next block. Quine keeps us posted. When Travis makes his move, we make ours. Sounds okay. It better be. Guthrie. Saunders, Lieutenant. I've assigned the medium rotary to the Paulson Hartford area. Travers driving. Uh, How did he take the assignment? Jumped at it. Not suspicious? No reason to be. Fifth night of the storm, main arteries cleared. Same conditions as last time. Yeah. Well, thanks for the assist, Saunders. Forget it. Just let me know how you make out. All set? Yep. What time we get there? 8.30. It's only five now. Yeah. Gonna be a long three and a half hours. Really getting cold. Yeah. Storm's not letting up any. No. Almost time, isn't it? Yeah. Eight fifty-five. A couple more minutes. Yeah. The streetcar's on time. The car'll be there. You wondering about Travers? No. Thought he'd be around by now. Might be a couple of blocks over. Storm like this, even a plow doesn't move too fast. I guess not. Yeah. Tough having to do it this way. No other way. No evidence. Quine. Yeah, Ben. Any sign of that snow plow? Nothing. You? Not yet. How's the street? Empty. Has been for a half hour. Getting pretty close now. It's 8.56. Think Travers is doping off? I doubt it. He's probably... Ben, ra- yeah? Plow's coming down the street. He's coming down the street now, Quine. The way he's heading. Probably go around the block to Paulson, come up behind him. Give us the word in time. I'll have to. I'm snowed in tight. Couldn't get out of here with a blowtorch. You'll have to handle it. We will. Here he comes. Yeah. Think the spot us? The only chance is when he passes the mouth of this alley. Yeah, he's starting to pass it. What do you think? Hard to tell. Probably not. He's got things on his mind. Yeah. Do you recognize him? No. Storm's too heavy. It's him, though. Has to be. What's the time? Oh, it's uh, 20 seconds past 8.57. Where's that streetcar? We'll get there. Hey, Ben. Yeah, Klein? The streetcar's stopping at the corner. Doesn't look like anyone's getting off, though. What's that mean? Just stopping there, Ben. Can't see what's going on from here. Oh, wait. Uh, somebody's getting off now. Can you tell if it's Barnes? Well, not from here. Looks like a woman, though. Walking this way along. Yeah. Yeah, it's a woman. Must be Barnes. Hit the starter, Pete. Yeah, sure. What about the snowplow? No sign of it yet. She's walking pretty slow, giving him plenty of time to make it. What's the matter with that thing? I don't know. She won't catch. Well, keep it going. She's almost at the first corner, Ben. Still no sign. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a plow. Coming off the car tracks and turning up Paul Snapper. Hey, you better get going. Come on, Pete. I'm trying. Just across the street. It won't be long now. Looks from here to catch up during the middle of the block. Well, what's wrong with it? I can't tell. The motor's warm enough. Of all the lies. I hope you're moving, Ben. Travis is only a couple of yards behind it now. I'd like to have my hands on Craig at the garage. He stopped the plow starting to get up. Where are you, Ben? I'm getting out, Pete. I'll try to... Hang on. Come on, Ben. He's moving up to us. Starting to run. Come on, give me the gun. There he is. Got a knife, Ben. Hold it, Travers. What the... Where the devil did you come from? Cut it pretty thin, didn't you, Lieutenant? Yeah, looks like it, Barnes. 
You okay? Sure, but let's get out of this storm. It's not helping your cold any. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number of their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they're sent to the washroom and dressed back into the jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. Now, the questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. Do they not pay too much attention to their answers? Thank you, kid. 